Hello friends. Now I am going to discuss our next method of generation of high AC voltage. But this particular method is also used to generate the high frequency. The name of that particular circuit is called as Tesla circuit or the coil is referred as a Tesla coil. <music> required high frequency high voltage that can be used for the rectifier dc power supplies for testing the electrical apparatus for switching surge for damping oscillation that is high voltage high frequency damping oscillations these are the four applications where this high frequency high voltage can be used there are certain advantages to that. There is absence of iron core. And hence, that saves the cost as well as the size. That saves the cost as well as the size. And as that iron core is absent, therefore the losses are also controlled. Then there is a pure sine wave output, which are expected from this. Then there is a slow buildup of voltage over a few cycles. And hence, no damage due to the switching surge. There is a difference in the switching surge and the slow buildup of voltage. In switching surge, that surge is indicating the rise in voltage or sudden rise in voltage. And slow buildup of voltage is just opposite to switching surge. And last advantage is uniform distribution of voltage across the winding coils due to subdivision of coil stack into the number of units. Now, after this, the commonly used high frequency resonant transformer is Tesla coil. So Tesla coil is generally used for the generation of high frequency, high voltage. And that is doubly tuned resonant circuit, which is shown in the diagram on next slide. The primary voltage rating is 10 kilovolt and the secondary may be rated up to as high as 500 to 1000 kilovolt. The primary is fed either from AC or DC supply. So there are certain elements used like capacitors, inductors, etc. So this is given to the condenser or a capacitor C1. There is a spark gap present which is represented as G. And that is connected across the primary supply which is triggered. And it is triggered at a supply voltage of V1, which induces high self excitation in the secondary. So let us check the diagram. This particular diagram consists of capacitor C1, a test object C2. C1 is placed on the primary side of the section and C2 is placed on the secondary side of the section, that is of the Tesla coil, where L1 and L2 be the inductors of the coin. M be the mutual inductance. So L1 and L2 can also be called as self-inductance and M be the mutual inductance. Then there is a spark gap present. That spark gap sparks when the voltage is reached to the required level. And the sparking between the electrodes or between the gap is nothing but the discharge or post breakdown phenomenon. The primary coil is wound on an insulator. So there is an insulator used. That insulator is of fiber tube material. The length of that is say one meter. That represents cylindrical or helical winding. Cylindrical or helical winding. And it consists of few tens of turns of copper strip or tubings. The secondary winding is spaced a quite away from the primary winding on another concentric fiber. So this is primary winding which is placed. Secondary winding is also placed on the same fiber tube of same kind of fiber tube or perex tube with few thousand turns. 
of few thousand tons. The whole assembly will be immersed in an oil. Both the windings are immersed in oil under certain pressure with separate bushings taken out for the primary and secondary windings. The primary winding is supplied through a high voltage capacitor rectifier unit rated for 10 kilo volt to 50 kilo volt and more. And the power rating of the transformer is 10 kVA or more. 10 kVA or more. The output voltage V2 is a function of the parameters L1, L2, C1, and C2, and the mutual inductance M. Generally, the winding resistances will be small and contribute only for damping of the oscillations. Now, in this particular case, whenever the supply voltage is given to the spark gap, the spark gap conducts and it charges capacitor to a voltage of V1. This transformer is helped to transfer that voltage due to this spark gap. When it sparks, the complete system get discharged through capacitor, which charges this capacitor and the potential get induced across the inductor. Now this voltage is now available across inductor L2 of few thousand turns and hence that voltage is greater than the voltage on the primary side. This voltage is given to the test specimen for the testing purpose. In earlier side, it is already mentioned where that voltage is required. So that high voltage of high frequency is used for rectifier as a DC power supply that can be used for switching surge, for damping oscillations, etc. So this high voltage can be used for certain testing purpose. Now, the analysis of the output voltage can be done in a simple manner, neglecting the winding resistances. We are not going to consider the winding resistance. The condenser C1 be charged to a voltage of V1. So it is shown already when the spark gap is triggered. So basically, when the spark gap triggers, this capacitor charges to the voltage of V1. Let a current I1 flows through the primary winding L1 and produces a current I2 through L2 and hence C2. So we have a flow of current on this loop as I1 and on this loop as I2. So let us analyze the circuit. So considering this circuit current as I1, this loop current is I1, the other loop current is I2. So what we get? We get V1 is equal to 1 upon C1 integration I1 dt plus L1 di1 by dt plus mutual inductance where the effect of current I2 is considered so it is m di2 by dt. On the other side of the transformer, the output voltage, as that voltage is appearing across capacitor. So we are going to write that capacitor voltage separately. So this zero is equal to one upon C2 integration I2 dt. In this equation, the capacitor voltage drop is 1 upon C2 integration I2 dt plus inductor L2, the current through that as di2 by dt plus mutual inductance M and the current effect is primary current that is I1. So this is our first equation. Now, if I find the Laplace transform of this equation, Laplace transform, here I'm considering the complete equation for primary and secondary side. So Laplace transform of that complete equation gives me V1 upon S is equal to L1 of S plus 1 upon C1 of S as the current through both is I1. And the Laplace transform can be written as I1. Small I1 can be represented as capital I1. Then M into 
S I T. So this is another equation. Same way, zero is equal to again here that I two can also be taken out common. So M into S into I one plus L two S plus one upon C two into S into I two. Then we have the output voltage V two. Which is voltage across capacitor, and if I just apply Laplace transform to that, that voltage across capacitor is nothing but the this one. So this is nothing but the voltage across capacitor. So directly I am writing the Laplace transform of it. So I get I two of S or I two simply upon C two into S, where V two of S is the Laplace transform of V two. So these are the equations. Now I am taking If I just solve this Laplace transform equation, what I get is that solution for V two. So V two I am writing directly without wasting much time as M V one upon sigma L one L two into C two into one upon gamma two square minus gamma one square in bracket. Cos of gamma one into t minus cos of gamma two t. This is what the voltage equation in terms of time domain. And sigma two or sigma is equal to one minus. I'll just write down sigma square is equal to one upon one minus m square upon l one into l two. Which is equal to one minus k square. So k is the coefficient of coupling between the windings L one and L two. Now same way, the values of the gamma one and gamma two can be written. Gamma one is equal to omega one square plus omega two square divided by two plus Square root of omega one square plus omega two square, omega one square plus omega two square, bracket square divided by two. This is minus sigma square omega one square into omega two square. That is the value of gamma one. Gamma two can be written as gamma two is equal to Omega one square plus omega two square upon two. Instead of plus, here you have minus again in square root. Omega one square plus omega two square bracket square divided by two. This is in one bracket. Minus sigma square omega one square omega two square, where. Omega one is equal to one upon root of L one into C one, and omega two is equal to one upon root of L two into C two. From this energy, which is generated, or the efficiency eta can also be represented. So W W is equal to one upon two eta. C one into V one square. That is the energy generated, which also can be written as one upon two C two V two square. And that gives me the equation for V two, which is nearly equal to V one in square root eta into C one upon C two. So it can be shown that if the coefficient of coupling k, if the coefficient of coupling k Is large, the oscillation frequency is less, and for large values of the winding resistances and k, the waveform may become a unidirectional impulse. This is shown in the next section, which we are going to deal with the generation of switching surge, and generation of switching surge is nothing but the impulse voltage. Now, if you ask me, what is difference in this particular? High frequency, high voltage generation. 
high frequency high voltage generation and impulse voltage or switching surge as i already discussed during start of this lecture i can say that high frequency high voltage is a steady generation of voltage and impulse voltage where that impulse that is of a high peak surge is generated with the help of circuit so that high peak of voltage is generated with the help of circuit called as impulse generation but this kind of voltage generation is called as high frequency high voltage in case of impulse the high frequency attainment is also there but the voltage which we get in impulse is of high peak so this gives me a kind of impulse of this kind so this is called as high peak where the time required to reach to this peak value is very less whereas in high frequency high voltage the voltage which reaches to the value of high voltage is more so the time required to reach to this high voltage is more slowly increase in voltage will gives us the high frequency high voltage so that's all with this discussion hope you understood the concept of high frequency high voltage generation thank you so much